Well, lack of popcorn is not leaving moviegoers from hitting one blockbuster hit. Top Gun Maverick soaring in its second weekend, crossing $500 million worldwide. Joining me now, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. Governor, great to see you. I, let me start with this. Okay, Top Gun is all the rage. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's going to see it. It's like this rallying point in America right now. What does the popularity of Top Gun tell you about where America is in terms of the divisiveness and just the sense that we need something to bring us back together? You know, Brian, I think it tells us that Tom Cruise is way more in touch with America than the rest of the people in Hollywood. He understands that people don't go to the movies to get preached to. They don't go to the movies to be told that they're racist or that America stinks. They go to be entertained. And by the way, they don't sit there with a bag of uh, soybeans in their lap to munch on. So I hope they get the popcorn thing fixed. But one of the reasons this movie is just a runaway uh, hit is because it's exciting. It's what movies are made for. It has everything that you want in the movie. And apparently Tom Cruise and the producers just spared no expense. $170 million to make the film, but in less than two weeks, Worldwide, they're $558 million having tickets sold. I mean, it's just a phenomenon, and I'm glad for Tom Cruise. I'm glad for the movie industry, and I'm glad for the American public. You know, Governor, you seem like the kind of guy who would have been rocking a pair of aviators in the 1980s. I can see, <laughs> I can see why you like this movie. Hey, I want to go to the popcorn thing for a second, though. Okay, so it's popcorn, right? It's it's just a thing you eat at the theater. But it strikes me as one of these quality of life things. You know, one thing that should be a given is if you go to a ball game, you can get a hot dog. If you go to a theater, yeah. you can get some popcorn. And and we're at this point in America where it's like every time consumers want to rev the engine and go do something it stalls out. You can't get the popcorn. You can't get the thing that you want. That's a quality of life issue, Governor, that I think really does end up getting reflected in politics. Talk a little bit about that. Well, it does. And people will want to say, how come we had popcorn and then now we don't? And this whole supply chain issue and the cost of doing business, at some point, somebody's going to figure out that the policies of the left, and I know this sounds partisan, but look, the partisans of the left have driven all the cost up. Inflation is killing the average American small business. It's also killing the pocketbooks of every single consumer because of fuel costs, grocery costs, the cost of transportation to get that popcorn from the farm to the processor, to the theater, and into the laps of the patrons who, if they can't get it, uh, just won't enjoy the movie nearly as much. Mm -hmm. So it, I hope that Americans are saying when they're watching the movie and enjoying it, I could enjoy this a lot more if the prices of everything in my life weren't so expensive. And maybe, just maybe, they'll start voting more intelligently. Top Gun's a bright spot this summer, obviously, but if you look at the polling, one thing that becomes clear is this growing sense of pessimism. You know, 83% of Americans think the economy is poor or not so good. And, you know, pessimism often is what's covered on the news. You're an optimistic guy. That's why I love talking to you. But tell us a second about what it means to have this kind of growing pessimism in a polity. Why is it so dangerous to have the kind of regime that can't give people hope for the future, which we just seem to lack right now in a very desperate way? I feel especially sorry, Brian, for younger people who haven't gone through a lot of crises. Maybe they've lived only their lives in the past 30 years. They've never seen the Cold War. They've never seen communism as it really is and how it inflicts such damage. And suddenly they're embracing things that are dangerous. And then some of the things they embrace are hurting them, hurting them badly. They're having huge problems in just paying their bills and looking at how they're going to be able to make it. And many of them don't understand that their idealism uh, about embracing certain political uh, ideas, it's failing them. Mm. So what I hope is that they'll come to a conclusion and say, you know, this is a great country and America is resilient. We've been through tough times. 78 years ago, America went forth on the beaches of Normandy at great risk and at great expense to the lives of young men, but they saved the world. Mm. We owe them something, and we owe them some optimism because they shed their blood on the beaches of Normandy in a way that uh, truly saved the world, and we should never forget that. That's where our optimism mm. ought to come from, is a, a perspective of history.
Hope for the future fuels heroism, and we need a lot of that right now. Governor, great way to end the conversation. Thanks for being with us. You bet. Thank you, Brian.